According to the Department of Public Safety, in 2017, more than 7,000 drivers were cited for texting and driving, nearly a 23% increase from the previous year. Further, one in five serious vehicle crashes can be attributed to distracted driving. Senator David Osmick joins me to talk more about it. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me, Shannon. The issue of cell phone use behind the wheel and distracted driving initially came before the legislature in 2001, and legislation has subsequently failed 11 times. Is 2019 the year? Well, I don't think 12 is a good dozen losses. I think we should probably make it past this time. Uh, I think there have been a lot of concerns that have been raised, certainly over the years. Last year, we had legislation uh, that didn't quite make it through the process uh, in both bodies. Um, we had a very short session, and we also had the, and unfortunately, we also had the garbage can 900 page omnibus bill, which I think this probably would have fallen into. So I think this year we need to have a standalone bill, have a very good discussion at the legislature about what we're doing and what we're, for, what we're enforcing. And I think my bill, the three phases of my bill, are actually what Minnesotans would support. So I think momentum, as you're suggesting, is growing behind this. Do you think this is something the legislature can tackle early on in the next session? Yes, I've actually spoken with Senator, um, Senator Scott Newman, who's going to be, who has the transportation gavel. The initial uh, committee that this is going through will be transportation, and his commitment has been to hear my bill, as well as other bills that deal with distracted driving and cell phone use uh, very early in the session. I will be ready out of the gates on day one with this, and also gathering up uh, testifiers to make sure that we have people in front of the legislature that can tell their stories about distracted driving, and in particular cell phone use. I really wanted to make it more global than just electronic and cell phone use, but you know what? You find out the legislature, you can get a little bit of a time, and uh, that's, what you, that's what you can get. So you sort of focus on what you can get and not what you can't. Well, and speaking of cell phone use and driving, I mean, anecdotally, when I'm on the roads, I see people looking at their phones, and they're not even trying to hide it anymore. People used to kind of keep it lower, and you could tell because they were looking. Now it's like up front and center. You've intentionally suggested increasing penalties for serious accidents resulting from distracted driving. Mm -hmm but not an outright ban on holding a device. Why? Because a lot of people are responsible with their cell phone use. I certainly have weaned myself off of looking at my cell phone all the time, even if when it goes ping. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are business people that go from place to place, need to have a cell phone. When I come to the legislature, I'm usually doing a conference call with my client or with other people on that half hour that I use to go from my, my business life to the legislature. So I don't want to impinge upon that find that activity because people are being responsible with them. But we need to get the attention if you are going to be irresponsible or you're gonna be texting while driving or you're just flat out not paying attention to what you do, the penalties need to fit the crime and people are, people are being maimed, bodily injured and killed as a result of act, this activity and it's time that the penalty fit the crime. Attorney General Lori Swanson has suggested that we must treat distracted driving the same way that we have treated driving under the influence. So increased penalties, more public awareness, even stigmatizing the behavior. In fact, because of that, traffic deaths from drunk driving have decreased from about 200 in 1998 to just 72 last year. Do you agree that the two offenses are on par? I absolutely agree with, with the, the Attorney General. Uh, they are on par. Dead is dead. If, you are, if a drunk driver kills someone, they are dead. You have impacted their family. If you hit somebody while you're distracted, uh, if somebody's walking on the shoulder and you hit them while you're distracted driving because you're using an electronic device, they're just as dead as a DWI. They should be on par. I'm not so certain that sh the public shaming attitude angle is probably the best way to go, but I agree with her. The legislation that I'm putting forth is going to make uh, distracted driving with electronic use uh, as long as you're not using, if you are using Bluetooth, it doesn't, that it exempts you from it, but if you are not using Bluetooth or, or a hands-free device, it's gonna be on par with DWI damage. It also will, we are also, also include, in, increasing at all three levels of offenses, first time, second time, and third and more. We're increasing the penalties, again, to get you aware of what you're doing. And third, we're adding uh, some language in to bring this into uh, the, uh, uh, bring into the uh, driver's ed training because it's not necessarily codified right now, but we should be educating our young people that this is a very dangerous situation. I don't let my, I've told my daughters, you do not pick up the phone while you're driving, regardless of what happens, don't pick up the phone, pull over and answer the phone. 
And people need to start understanding that their actions are having some serious consequences in society. Let's talk about the, the increased penalties that you're proposing, because currently the first offense is $50 and subsequent offenses are somewhere around 275 Now, I read that you suggested second and subsequent offenses being as much as 750 Do you want to increase first offense? And what about the idea of subsequent offenses having your license suspended, like happens with a DWI? Well, the first offense should go up from 50. I think it's rather ridiculous that you hit get only hit once in a $50 fine. If you change it to 200 or 300, which is the direction I'm going for first offenses, you're going to get people's attention in a big hurry. Second, uh, taking licenses, I'm very cautious about because then you are really seriously for what is seen as a moving violation. It, it, it's it's a very serious situation when you take away someone's driver's license because you're probably impacting their family in ways that you don't even understand. And their financial, their exactly. ability to work and everything else, yes. Um, however, on the third offense, I'm working on adding to the legislation, if you are caught three times doing this type of behavior, that we will take your cell phone. If you have certain cell phones, that could be an extra $1,000 fine on top of it. So we need to get people's attention on this. I just don't like the ban situation. I think if you put enforcement, more enforcement, explaining to people that this is serious and get even more publicity on why you shouldn't be looking at your phone or even using it, I think we're going to make a change in people's behavior. When someone dies as a result of one of these distractive driving incidences, uh, jail time is typically minimal. Are you proposing then that if someone dies that the jail time that that person faces is similar to if it were a driving under the influence death? Absolutely. The statute ch language we're going to change is to do one line insert into the drunk or into where all of the DWI and offenses for driving under the influence of drugs, etc are already in state statute, we're going to add an additional line in that exact same statute, or statute area that makes it on par with, with, uh, with death, uh, great bodily harm, or just plain old quote, quote unquote bodily harm. It's all going to be on the same level as DWI because honestly, debt is debt. And I really like, as I said earlier, I'd really like to go, out the, go after the laws too where you're, if you're digging for the last Cheeto in the bag and you run somebody over and kill them, you should be spending significant time in jail there too. Like I said before, we can only take certain bites at the apple at a certain points in time. And I don't think we can probably do the whole enchilada, but this should be something that most Minnesotans support. So uh, you mentioned driver's education. It seems that if we do have new laws on the books that, that informing the public of them so that they can change their behavior will be important and driver's education for young drivers and new drivers to the state. Uh, is that going to send a clear enough message, do you think, from the legislature that when you're driving, you should focus on driving? I think it does. We all have those amber boards that put out amber alerts and tell you about driving conditions. I see those on the roads all the time telling you to buckle up. I buckle up all the time because it's the smart thing to do. Honestly, I don't think we necessarily needed a law for that, but uh, I do it all the time as my family does. But we should be able to increase, and we always have ad campaigns from the State Patrol and from agencies to, to educate people. This is just another way to get their attention. If you say $750 fine and we can take your cell phone away from you, I think it may get their attention. And if that doesn't, doesn't curb this a little bit or a lot of it, uh, we may start looking at a ban. But I really don't want to go in that direction because bans are very, very difficult to enforce. And I don't think that's where Minnesotans really want to go, especially in, with the large areas in the state where there's a lot of rural areas that people want to get business done on their way between places. Senator David Osmick, more to come on this. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.